Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 11. It's on the equivalence principle. What's equivalent? It's the two different types of mass. And so how do we figure out the mass of this apple? I could use a balance and compare it to a known one kilogram mass to figure out its mass, like on a triple beam balance. Or I could apply a force to the apple, measure its acceleration, and then using Newton's second law, work back to find its mass. And scientists have noted that you could measure it in two different ways, but you always get the same answer. And so first person to do that was Galileo, followed by Newton, and even Einstein measured this and thought it was interesting that the two were equivalent and he figured out a theory of relativity that kind of explained that. And so mass again can be inertial mass or gravitational mass. Inertial mass is taking a mass, applying a force to it, and measuring the acceleration to work back and find the inertial mass. It's based on the inertia of an object. Gravitational mass, however, we're taking a mass and put it in, putting it inside a gravitational field and measuring the force of gravity on that mass. Uh, now we've found, scientists have found, that these are equivalent. If you do it in those two different ways, you're going to get the same number. And that eventually led to the general theory of relativity. And so I wanted to measure inertial mass and gravitational mass, and I used a ruler to do it. So what I essentially did was tape a ruler to the side of my desk, I gave it a flick, and then I, I recorded it with video and slowed down that video. So we're going to count four oscillations. So there's one, two, three, four. Okay, so it went back and forth four times. And so we're really using the ruler almost as a spring. And so it took 3.0 seconds to do that. In the second trial, what I did is added mass to that ruler. And you'll see that it goes much slower. And so this would be one oscillation, two, three oscillations, and then four oscillations. Now you can see that it went much slower. The overall time is 7.4 seconds. Why is it taking longer? It's because that weight has more inertia. And so it takes uh, a slower acceleration with a given spring constant in this case. Now, um, what do you think the next one's going to be? I, I put 20 grams on the weight. So I started with zero, then 10 grams, and then 20 grams. So you might thinking, well, it's gonna be slower for sure. What's the number going to be? Well, if it's linear, we would see an increase of 4.4 seconds, so it'd be around 11.8 seconds. And so let's see what the time is. So it's 10.4 seconds, and so it doesn't look like it's linear. Uh, I graphed this data, and it looked like that. And so on my graph, I've got the mass across the bottom. So we started with a zero gram mass, then a 10 gram mass, and then a 20 gram mass. You can see that the period is dropping off like that. And so if I wanted to measure the inertial mass of an object, I then taped a penny to the ruler and gave it a flick. I would just measure that. So I have to figure out the time of this unknown. And so in this case, it took 4.6 seconds. And so if I want to figure out the inertial mass of the penny, what I would do is find the period of 4.6, read that over across to my graph, and you can see that it's going to be somewhere around 3 or 4 grams is what a penny is using inertial mass. Again, not super precise method, um, but it seems to work. If we were to use the gravitational mass, how would we do that? Well, I used a ruler again. I put a 10 gram mass on this side, I put the penny on the other side, and I tried to get it to balance. I could never get it perfectly balanced and then take a photo, but this is pretty close to being balanced. And so now how do you figure out the mass of the penny this way? Well, you could use one unit. In other words, the distance from the fulcrum right here we'll say is one unit. And so how many units are we going to have on the other side of the ruler? Um, well, if we kind of expand that out, I got around 3.5 units on the right side. And so how do I solve the gravitational mass? I just set a ratio up where on the left side I have my mass and the distance, same on the right side. And so I could solve it for that unknown. In this case, the unknown is going to be the mass 2. And so if I multiply this, it's 10 on this side, 3.5 on that side. And so I get a mass of around 2.8 grams. And so again, on the last inertial mass experiment, I'd said it's around 3 or 4 grams. And now we get kind of a similar answer. And so we're seeing equivalence. They're the same value, even though there's no reason that they should be the same value. And the first person to note this was Galileo. Uh, he didn't just drop objects off the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He was doing really detailed experimentation with inclined planes. And what he was able to do is measure this inertial mass, also gravitational mass, and he found there was equivalence. Newton did similar things with pendulums. And so scientists always thought that was very interesting. And it took Albert Einstein to kind of uh, explain why those are the same thing. And he built his theory of relativity on top of that. 
And so again, that's outside the scope of physics one and two, but it's interesting to talk about it for just a second. And so he said, imagine the following two situations. We've got a rocket that's here on the earth. And so what's, what's the force that's acting on that? That force is going to be the force of gravity pulling down on that person. And now let's say we give universal or uh, constant acceleration to a rocket as it's traveling through space. And let's set that acceleration equal to the acceleration uh, due to gravity on our planet. What he said is there's no way you'd be able to uh, discriminate between those two events. If I take uh, an object, for example, and I drop an object from here, it's going to fall down, acted on by gravity. And the same thing is going to occur here as we accelerate away from it. And so he really tied together that equivalence principle and he used it to build his general theory of relativity. And so did you learn to design a plan for collecting data to measure gravitational mass, so we could use a balance to do that, and inertial mass, which again is using the acceleration based on an applied force? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.